Okay, let's look at something specific called karyotyping. And there's fantastic online simulations of this. Just go to Google and type in uh, online karyotyping activity. And the first two hits are two things that you should definitely try out. So a uh, quick review, Myto meiosis, sorry, meiosis is actually a reduction division of a diploid nucleus to a to form haploid nuclei right here. And diploid we represent by saying 2n and haploid means n. So the diploid number and haploid number are different for different organisms. For humans, the diploid number is 46 and the haploid number is 23. Therefore, n equals 23. Okay. Now, when you're looking at something called karyotyping, which is very useful, it helps you, it allows you to um, find out if there are any kinds of chromosomal abnormalities and hence any kinds of diseases that might have been inherited, some diseases that are caused by problems inside chromosomes, basically. Here's a quick reminder of what chromosomes are. This is important, homologous chromosomes specifically, because you, since we know that all of our body cells have 46 chromosomes in them, consisting of uh, two sets of 23, actually. So 23, and any every single one of your body cells, you have 46 chromosomes. 23 of those came from your mom, 23 came from dad. And they can be actually paired up with each other. So each of those 23 from mom actually matches with the 23 from dad by um, their size and shape. So they're called homologous chromosomes, the ones that match together. So chromosome number one from mom matches with chromosome number one from dad. How do you know? Well, both of those chromosomes will be approximately the same length. They'll have the same centromere position, which is the, the place where uh, the sister chromatids were attached to each other. Staining patterns, basically you can kind of see some patterns down here. And the genes will actually be um, that correspond for the traits will be actually at, at the same locations. Those are called gene loci. And so you should expect if the gene for, I don't know, if one of the genes for eye color is here, there will be another gene for eye color over here in the exact same location on the corresponding um, homologous chromosome. So these pictures down here are called karyotypes. So they're called karyotypes and you can physically do them by taking a picture of somebody's chromosomes at high magnification and then using computer software or a pair of scissors to um, cut them out and arrange them to find out if there's a correct number. So when they're all jumbled up, you get something that looks like this. But when you arrange them in order <clears throat> of their size, you can number them like this and count that there's the correct number right here. So here is a karyotype arranged by with the chromosomes arranged by size and structure. So these are the homologous chromosomes. Um, and you have 23, 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. And after you rank them all up in the end, uh, you'll find you should have two left over. And those two left over are the, are the 23rd pair. They are the sex chromosomes. The rest of these are called autosomes. <coughs> this remaining pair, <coughs> excuse me, this remaining pair called the sex chromosomes will actually help to determine the gender of the baby. So look, I can see I have two very different size chromosomes. These are actually the X and Y chromosome. Can you guess? It's a boy. If the last two are very similar in size and with, the, with banding the same, then it'll be two X chromosomes. Then you can end up with a girl. XX for girl, XY for boy. You'll see this in all kinds of genetic practice problems. Now, how can I identify various types of problems. Well, one thing that actually comes up is that by doing this, you can find out if one of the chromosomes is broken. You can have like a shortened second uh, chromosome for number five, and that results in something called cri du chat. My French is really bad. Cry of the cat syndrome. Find out more <clears throat> about that online. Here's another, probably one of the most famous examples. If you take a look here, I can see what can I tell from this. Well, it's a girl because there's no Y chromosomes. There are the, the last pair, the sex chromosomes. You have two X chromosomes. This is a girl. But there's something unique here. We have three copies of chromosome number 21. And that's one of the most common things that actually happens when we talk about chromosome abnormalities because this is what characterizes Down syndrome. Down syndrome, you end up with, it's called trisomy 21, which just means three copies of chromosome 21. How did that happen? Well, something went wrong during uh, division in either in either um, anaphase one or anaphase two, where some of the chromosomes were supposed to separate out. The homologous chromosomes here in this diagram were supposed to separate out, but three of them went over here and you only had one over here. So here's trisomy, so you end up with the problem. And that's called non-disjunction. 
non-disjunction is when these chromosomes fail to segregate properly during uh, anaphase 1 or anaphase 2. So how can you get this kind of picture? There's all kinds of other things too. There's various things like people can only end up with one X chromosome. I think that's called Turner syndrome. Or you can end up with XXY, three sex chromosomes. That's called Klinefelter syndrome. That's all kinds of good stuff. If you actually do that Google search for online karyotyping activity, I think one of the activities will take you through a few of these. You'll actually try this out yourself and identify three different um, chromosome diseases and find out what they are. It's quite interesting stuff. How can you do a karyotype? Well, you have to get these chromosomes. So a good time to do this is when the baby uh, hasn't been born yet. But this raises all kinds of ethical issues because what, what are you going to do with, with that knowledge? I mean, parents may decide that um, a kid has Down syndrome. I don't have the resources or I don't want to raise a kid. There's pros and cons to all of this as well, too. Um, but try to think about some of the ethical issues that are involved. Anyways, the two ways to actually get a sample of the actual, a sample of the actual chromosomes is one is called amniocentesis where some of the amniotic, amniotic fluid is actually removed and tested and basically we look at the chromosomes. The other is called chorionic villus sampling. If you study the reproduction unit, then you should know that the chorionic villi are located uh, on the placenta. And the placenta is actually fetal tissue. When a mother gives birth to the, to the baby, the placenta also gets uh, kicked out as well too. So the placenta, placenta is actually fetal tissue. So if you sample some of the placental tissue that actually contains the chromosomes that match those of the baby. So that's what karyotyping is about. Those are two ways to actually um, get a sample of this. And hopefully you understand how to arrange these things. It's not too difficult. And then some of the other problems that can arise and how to identify those problems by using something called a karyotype. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time.